The Kia Optima is dead. Now it's the K5, which makes things more confusing if you don't understand alphanumerics like I don't. However, there's some big changes here, so let's get started. You're just jonesing to know about the K5 interior and features overall, aren't you? So this starts at around 23,500 for the base model LX. Goes all the way up to the GT trim with the bigger engine. That's 30 grand. Fine print, however, is all those packages you start tacking on. I'm in the EX. And the EX starts around $27,900. And this has the EX Premium Package, that is $3,400. And for that, you get a larger infotainment screen, 10 inches, which is typically how I roll. Then you have the Premium Bose Audio System, which I'm gonna show you the graphs here. We're not gonna get into great detail because we're only allowed to drive these cars for a day. That adds cost. And then you have the full-blown safety suite, which allows this car to use cruise control all the way down to stopping and starting in horrible traffic conditions. So that's a lot of money, but you're getting a lot of stuff bundled there. So this has the simulated wood grain interior around the trim on the center dashboard and the doors. And this looks exactly like the fake wood that's in the Telluride. It's not offensive. It's not nearly as bad as what you found in the CRV that I just drove. There is a ton of piano gloss plastic in here, and you don't get this if you get the GT line. That changes all of that out to matte trim, so it's good that they have the option there. Everything looks more upscale. This looks like an entry-level luxury car, and I say that a lot because this is what happens in the sedan market. Now, to compete with all the SUVs, they got to totally tart this thing up, and it completely works. It's a little bit more stylistically forward than the Sonata. I feel like there's this sportier approach to it and I use that word very loosely, but that's typically what Kia does versus the Hyundai counterparts. The steering wheel is very traditional. All the knobs, buttons, and switches work. All the switch gear, the center stack area is easy to use. With the bigger infotainment, however, you go to capacitive buttons instead of physical buttons around the infotainment with the exception of the volume knob. The HVAC controls are easy to use. However, there's so much glossy black plastic here. I'm gonna have an aneurysm. But again, it's one of those things that you either get used to or you don't. But let's talk about the seating and comfort and storage capacity. Now, my daughter Tatiana, she's like, Dad, my phone gets hot in the wireless charger. I'm like, well, that's not my problem. Don't use it. Well, Kia has that figured out. The wireless charging solution in here is ventilated to help keep your phone cooler. The other part is it's a very interesting place for storage. It's kind of in a place that's easy to get to and not as distracting, you don't always see it. The storage in the cubbies and the armrest are enormous and the frontal part, you can put pretty much anything in there. The only letdown is the door panel storage. You cannot fit a bigger water bottle and if you're eco-conscious like me and I sip my water in big ass bottles, they do not fit in the door. You're gonna be basically deforming the door card to, to fit bigger bottles in there. That's really the only negative in terms of usability here. Seating comfort is traditional Kia stuff. It finds a good balance between somebody that has a huger frame and somebody that needs more support like me. After dropping off Tatiana at Bible Camp, I called my local hair removal and wax clinic and unfortunately they were closed, but I had Elena's cell phone number. I said, look, my back hair my scrotum and my anal sphincter is getting out of control. How do I get this dealt with? And she's like, well, do you have a place we can do it? I'm like, well, come into my office. The Optima, sorry, K5's back seat is incredible for all these tasks. You're running a small business that can't legally be operated? Well, you can do it back here. So you could fit almost the best in class amount of people back here. And the good thing is, is, when I'm sitting back here in normal operating conditions, I have a buddy, he thinks he's huge, right? He's always talking about it. So he puts his seat back into my knees and I have to eat them. Now I don't have to deal with that in the K5. 
So let's take a look at the trunk real quick. Now Elena needed to put her wax kit and her sugaring kit in the back. Wow. She fit it all. I mean, this trunk space is really big. It's wide, I'll give you that, and the depth is incredible. This is the only part here. This is where you're gonna struggle with it. So if you have huge loads you need to transport, you might wanna double think it, but take a look at it before you make a decision. When I'm getting arrested on a Saturday night after a big uh, tailgating party with all my friends, it's totally comfortable to get bent over on this thing. And I guess that's a great time to talk about the Underneath the Kia K5, I'm gonna say this. Just did a video on the new Hyundai Sonata. This is identical underneath. I'm not going to cover every single detail that I did on that. If you wanna know about all the mechanical things that they're adding to this body structure, check that out. So I'm gonna give you the highlights here. Underneath, you have a strut suspension in the front. This is built on a front wheel drive architecture with the capability of adding all wheel drive. So there's tr two trim levels that they add all wheel drive here. It's LXS and the GT line. You have two motors in the new K5, that's it. Every trim level, gets a 1.6 liter turbo, their global engine. Now they do have one additional trim called the GT. This gets their new 2.5 liter turbo and an eight speed dual clutch. Now everything else gets a torque converted automatic, no CVTs, nothing fancy. So hopefully if you like a turbocharged engine, that's pretty much your only option for the new Optima. There's no V6, that's all gone. And there's no hybrid currently either. So let's talk about the basics. Aluminum lower control arm. This is something that Hyundai typically does not do and Kia does not do on any other models. It's always steel, so this is a first except with the Genesis lineup. It has an aluminum knuckle, but everything is really covered up here. And their main goal for this architecture was to reduce road noise, improve rigidity, they wanted this to be a more refined experience. So the side aero panels and NVH coverings go farther back. This has been added here, but there are way more vibration isolators and dampers on these new generation of cars than the previous one. So let's take a look at the back briefly. Now continuing on in the rear, it's the same as what we saw in the Sonata, right down to the muffler on here. The exhaust tip is facing downwards to prevent soot from building up on the back of the bumper and it has fake exhaust tips. The 1.6 liter is direct injection only. However, the turbo motor does get dual injection, just something to note. They've added this panel here on the new generation to, pro to help smooth out airflow in the back, help aerodynamics. And you have carpeted wheel well liners to reduce road noise and tire noise. You have a multi-link rear, spring is separated from the damper and you have an aluminum knuckle. And the biggest thing about the back of this car is the chasm that is here. And you can see this is where they've designed it to fit that all wheel drive on demand differential. The subframe, this huge gap here easily bolts up. And this is how they build these modern architectures to be scalable for different cars, to stretch them out, lengthen them and add features as the customers want it. So they can use it a little bit. It's just more diverse in terms of design and of course, better for us. We get more options out of the same car. But let's take this for a ride and see how it operates. Setting off in the new K5 1.6 liter turbo. Now, much like the Sonata, this is the same thing, same drivetrain. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the nuances of both. Kia typically is tuned a bit more fun to drive and it definitely, you feel it on the interior space. This has a more connected cabin. It has more traditional elements like the gauge cluster isn't completely digital. You have a detented shifter, no push button shifter. So you feel mechanically more connected, even though that's subjective, it's not real. You have all the torque at like 1800 RPMs. And when you have all that torque at 1800 RPMs through front wheel, through a front wheel drive architecture that just isn't, is not inherently good at putting power down, you get a lot of this you're always spinning your wheels when you're trying to accelerate and turn, no matter what you do. And the traction and stability control system on Kias and Hyundais are so aggressive that 
like sometimes you're, you need to get out quick and it kills the power so much that it's like you're driving a 30 horsepower car. That's how much it kills the power and it can be very disconcerting. But when you throw the 2.5 liter at this, which is even more horsepower, that's still front wheel drive. And I, I just can't understand I mean, I guess the buying public that buys this just never turns the steering wheel and accelerates or uses the accelerator at all to get this thing going. But if you're just driving it as a cruiser, it's great. It's super quiet. The suspension is really well dampened. It, it handles every pavement type. It is super, super refined. You would never know that you're in a more affordable sedan. But again, they've upped the styling game. They've upped the interior game. They have some of the best technology implementation in terms of wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, all the subsystems, the safety systems work great in here. It's just the damn drivetrain and the front wheel drive architecture is holding back everything. It's like, this goes from a 95% down to like a 75% because of that. And if you don't favor a good driving experience and all you want is everything else, you're gonna love this car. But from a drivability standpoint, it's not my favorite thing on four wheels. So let's get into the final thoughts and talk about the pros and the cons. Final thoughts on the Kia K5. Now, since I've only had this for one day, it's hard to really come up with a great overall impression. However, last week I spent a ton of time in the Sonata. These cars are identical mechanically in every single way, and I can't even tell suspension changes. So where does that leave you? It leaves you with the styling differences, and the K5 is a much more cohesive design. And the interior feels a little bit more classic. You have the regular shifter in it. You have a normal steering wheel design. I think people are going to get at it and feel more comfortable. This is one of the best sedans from a driving perspective for comfort. It's very soft, it's super compliant, and it's very quiet. The entry level price around 23 grand is a good starting point. Of course, when you spec it out all the way to the GT with the turbocharged 2.5 liter, you get into way over 30,000. And we, the last thing is really the drivability. With the turbo motor in here, the 1.6 and front wheel drive with an open diff, this is not fun to drive. It has a hard time putting down power. And when you add a 2.5 liter turbo to it, it better have a limited slip differential because that's front wheel drive only. If you don't care about driving and you just want smoothness and quietness, you're going to love this and definitely opt for the Bose audio system, which is much better than the Honda and Toyota counterparts. So we'll get back to this car later and thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh yeah, look at that garbage can. <laughs>